Hey everyone, good afternoon. I'm Angela Andrew and welcome to Luminar Coffee Break. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to use Luminar AI with Aurora HDR. If you're a fan of HDR photography, then this episode is for you. I'm gonna show you how to take multiple exposures from Luminar AI into Aurora HDR and back so you can make the best of both worlds and have a lot of fun. I wanna say a quick hello to Sandra, Big Mac, Russ, and Bill. Glad to have you guys all today, here today. Um, hope you guys enjoy the episode. Let me go ahead and switch my screen here. And there we go. Hope you guys can see my Luminar AI right now. I have the catalog up. And I first wanna show you our after picture. This is what we're gonna end up with at the end of today's episode. So this is an image from Daniel Corden, one of our ambassadors. And it's just a really cool image. After I took it to our Aurora HDR, and brought it back to Luminar, this is what we started with. So you can see it's very flat. And then let me show you here, I'm gonna hit G on my keyboard to go back to my grid view. These were our two original exposure, exposures. So there's the brighter one, and then there's the darker one. So I combined those bright one, those two exposures together in Aurora HDR, made a couple of small adjustments in Aurora, and then brought it back into Luminar for finishing touches. Want to say hello to Julie and to Donald. Glad you guys are able to be here today. All right, I'm gonna hit that G key on my keyboard again, and I'm gonna select both of these images. And I'm on a Mac, so I'm gonna be holding down my Command key so I can skip this image and select that one as well. If you're on a Windows machine, that'll be your Control key. And then I'm gonna right click on either one of these images and tell it open in Aurora HDR. And that'll go ahead and take it all the way over to Aurora, and I'll go ahead and do some processing there. Give it just a moment here to load up. Hi, Yvonne, glad you were able to make it today. All right, so we have our two exposures here and you can do more than two. You're not limited to two, but this is just what I had available to me and I thought we came up with a good result, so this is the one I decided to share. I'm gonna go ahead and choose auto alignment. I always, always, always do auto alignment, even if I'm on a tripod, because even the smallest shake of your tripod can cause those things to be out of alignment and make your uh, final image look a little bit soft. So always use auto alignment. It takes a slightly longer time to process, but the final result is better. I also like to click over here into my settings, make sure color denoise is turned on, and my chromatic aberration reduction. If I had something in the frame that was moving between the two different shots, I would also use ghost reduction. In this case, I don't need it, but should you need it for another image, when you turn that on, I always try to use the lowest amount possible. And the reason is the higher that ghost reduction gets, the more compromises you make in your image and the less processing flexibility you have. So always keep that as low as possible. But for now, I'm gonna turn that off. Now I'll click back out of the settings window and tell it to create HDR. So this will take a moment to go ahead and process and merge these two images. And then we'll have a little bit of fun here in Aurora. So give it just a moment. It has its own magic to work through. <laughs> So I hope you guys are doing well today. Make sure you pop any comments you have into the comments and I will do my best to answer them on this show. Uh, a couple of things to let you know, a lot of you have been asking about Big Sur support for our applications. We released on Tuesday an update for Aurora HDR and Luminar 4, so they're now Big Sur compatible. If you run that update and run into trouble, make sure you reach out to support at skylum.com so our support team can help. And I also got the good news today that Luminar 3 and Luminar Flex will also be updated for Big Sur support. Now, I don't have an ETA on that, but they made the decision that even though those are, those are considered legacy applications, which means they're no longer being, up, being updated, we have enough people who are still using them and enjoying them. We decided to go ahead and start working on adding Big Sur support to those as well. So that's some great news. I hope you guys like that. All right, let's see here. Somebody asked, how can I change my name that's showing it to my actual name? Hmm. That would probably be a setting inside of YouTube for you. Um, go into your settings and tell it to change from whatever your screen name is and put it into your regular name. I'd have to look up the settings for that personally, so I'm not entirely sure. All right, so our HDR is up on the screen, so let's play. So the first thing I wanna do is adjust the tone a little bit. You'll see that by merging these two images together, we got both the detail in the sky and we got more detail around the, the shadows. So I wanna take the smart tone and further up and up those shadows a little bit more. You can see we can bring in a lot of detail around those edges of the cave. And then I also wanna bring my highlights down 
a little bit to just balance it out. Now we did open up the shadows quite a bit, so sometimes you tend to get a bit of noise up in these shadow areas. So I'm gonna go here to HDR Denoise and pull that up just a little bit to compensate. See, Julie asks, when do you use HDR one dark and one lighter? Um, is that when do, let's see, when do you use HDR, do you need one dark or one lighter? Okay, so when you do HDR, you can do it with a single exposure. Uh, helps if it's raw and it'll bring out a lot of detail in your shadow and highlights areas. However, if your single exposure doesn't have enough detail in those shadows and highlights, there's no detail to be recovered. So in those situations when you're working with a really wide dynamic range, let's say you're at the beach photographing a sunset, the sand is dark, but your horizon is very, very bright. You might need three, five, seven or more to be able to get every bit of detail in all of those shadows and highlights. It really depends on the scene. And in this one, we have two to work with, so that's what I'm showing. But there's no, there's no limit, and you can do it with one as well. So I hope that answers your question. All right, so let me see here. I think that was pretty much all I wanted to do here in Aurora. Let's go ahead and take this back to Luminar. I'm gonna go up here to, let me move a little preview window out of the way here, uh, file and export. And I already have my folder selected. This is the one where the original image is kept and I don't wanna overwrite the original. So I'm gonna append Aurora HDR. It's spelling. And because I already have another one in there, this same file, I'm gonna go ahead and call it number two. So I go through this. I'm not doing any sharpening yet because I'll do some of that in Luminar. I'm gonna leave my resizing alone to the original, sRGB, a TIFF, 16 bits and my resolution is 300 pixels per inch all right so let's go ahead and hit save and that'll take it back over to luminar once that's done processing give it just a moment all right so now we can switch back over to luminar and i'm going to go over here to the folder where i know this is kept and it's here in this mongolia folder and we now have a brand new hdr actually that's not the hdr give me a second here Mm. There we go, that's the one. All right, so now let's go ahead and work with this a little bit. I'm gonna go into my templates and I'm gonna take a look here at first at this for this photo section and kind of scroll through here and see what, kind, what style is really calling me. For this one, I think scenery will do the trick and I'm gonna go with simple. And you'll see how that immediately takes that image from being quite flat adds a lot of texture and detail, opens up those shadows a little bit more, and just makes it look a lot better. So let's take a look at that before and the after. Uh, let's see here, Julie's asking why not save it as a raw photo? So once you merge those two raw photos together, they're no longer raw. Um, once you bring any raw image into software, it converts it, it has to read that raw format and convert it into a readable image format. And when you go to export, you can't export another raw image. So that's why I chose to send a TIFF. And that has as much data as absolutely possible for us to work with and do future edits. Hope that helps. All right, so now that we have our template applied and a good starting point, let's go over to edit and refine this a little bit. I wanna first start by going into Composition AI and we'll take a look at our composition. So Composition AI is gonna give us a suggestion and let's see what that does. All right, so I'm not really fond of what this crop did. It cut off our person over here, it cut off the edge of the, edge of the cave. Sometimes the comp, the, what the AI suggests isn't right. So this is where AI is just a tool and you're, it's up to you as the photographer, as the artist, to choose what's right. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset that I'm actually gonna change the orientation of this and then move that around. And I think right about there, maybe up a tiny bit more. So that way we have a nice framing here with the cave. We have this you know, rock, this path leading us out. I think that looks really nice. I'm gonna go ahead and hit return on my keyboard to commit that crop. And now this is what we're gonna work with. I think that's a lot more pleasing. So let's work a little bit more with our tones. We can go to enhance AI and we can pull that up a little, and you can see that's adding a little bit more texture, a little bit more contrast. Sky Enhancer might bring out a little bit more detail in those clouds. That looks good. 
All right, now I do feel like the colors in this are a little bit over the top. We can go to our color, our color tool and pull back on those colors a little bit. And I'm using the Vibrant slider because it has a lighter touch than flat out using saturation. Saturation is like wielding a hammer and Vibrance is just, you know, tweaking it a little bit more gently. So I like to use Vibrance when possible. Sometimes you have to use saturation, but it really just depends. Um, let's see what else we can do here. Pull back on the Vibrance. Let's add a vignette because we wanna further draw our viewer down that path and into that valley. So let's add a vignette. I'm gonna bring my amount slider down to negative 100. I'm gonna make that size actually a little bit smaller. I'll click on choose subject so I get this place where I want it. I'm gonna move it up a little bit here so this opening in the cave is the center of our vignette. Then I'll go down to our advanced settings and I'm gonna grab feather and bring that up so we have a nice smooth transition. And now you're probably looking at this going, wow, that is a really dark vignette way, way, way too much, and I absolutely agree. I pull that vin vignette amount slider down to negative 100 because I wanna be able to place it more easily. Now that I have it placed, I can go to my amount slider again and pull that up to the point that I think looks good. I think that looks awesome right there. So this is where we end up. Let's go ahead and take a look at our before. Come on. Oops, I need to click on choose subject there, turn that off. Now there's our before and our after. So Sandra's asking about the raw to edit. Um, so when I went from Luminar to Aurora initially, that took the raw files from Luminar and that's what we opened up in Aurora. Um, and you're asking about color grading. There is a LUT tool in Aurora and there's also the mood tool which uses LUTs here in Luminar. So you can definitely do color grading if you want to. All right, so there we go. There's the before, the after. A Couple of things that I wanna fix. We have a little bit of something here in the bottom right corner, and then this little bit of sun flare right here. We can easily get rid of those, get rid of those distractions. Let's go up to our erase tool, and I'm gonna go ahead and use the bracket keys on my keyboard to make that brush a little bigger. And I'm just gonna brush in there and brush in that corner. We'll go ahead and click erase. And come on. <laughs> There we go, it's, it's working. Let's see, Sandra says I'm a visual artist too. Lightroom editing on. So when I go, right in this situation, I'm using Luminar AI as the home base. If I'm going from Lightroom, it depends on what I do in Lightroom or what I wanna do in Lightroom, whether or not I'll send a TIFF with edits or send the raw, I do both. So <laughs> there we go, alrighty. So now those little distractions there are gone. Now, if you look at this and you think maybe it's a little over the top, I know everybody has their own personal taste and how what they like, you can always grab this slider down here in the bottom right corner, drag that back to reduce the overall effect. Let me pull that back. What on earth did it just do? It popped. Well, you know what, folks? Guess what happened? <laughs> um, it's because we're using a beta version of Luminar AI, Luminar just crashed. <laughs> Never a great thing to happen on a live presentation, but to let you know that we're thoroughly testing this, and that's why we're doing this. These things happen, and I can go ahead and report it to our QA team, and we'll get it fixed before the launch. And on that note, not sure if you heard, but we have a target date now. We are targeting to release Luminar AI on December 15th. So for those of you who are wanting to get this before Christmas, either as a gift for yourself or a loved one, or to take those family pictures and make them amazing, you should have it before Christmas. So with that, I wanna say have a great afternoon, and I hope you guys enjoyed the presentation, even though we got it cut a little bit short. You can see what the power is of working with both Luminar AI and Aurora HDR. So I hope you give it a try when the software comes out and have some fun with that. So I'm going to go ahead and sign off. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.